Okay, so hi everybody, welcome, uh, happy to be here. Uh, I'm Amit, a product manager in Defender for IT uh, product gr group, and I'm responsible, uh, along with Yossi Hassan from Sentinel, who is in the call as well for the better together solution between Defender IT and Sentinel to enable uh, a unified SOC, IT OT SOC. Uh, in today's session, I will present along with uh, Tiander from Sentinel team. Um, and so let's start. So in today's session, we are going to cover four main topics. Uh, the first one is the IoT OT security challenge. We'll understand what is uh, OT IoT and what are the challenges and why it's so important to secure those environments. Second, we will, we will uh, discuss how we are addressing those challenges um, and, and some of the pain points the Defender for IoT product solving. The third topic is uh, how do we help SOC analysts to deal with OT incidents within the unified IT OT SOC? And then we will do a demo to illustrate the unified SOC in Sentinel. Okay, so before diving to the details, let's start with a brief overview of Defender for IoT. Uh, so Defender for IoT is a platform to des it's designed to secure the IoT and OT devices and, and networks. Uh, and it all began almost 10 years ago with a startup company called Cyberis, CyberX that specialized in the OT security. Uh, was founded by, by Blue Team Defender with the goal to secure the OT environments such as critical infrastructure, manufacturing, production lines, and so on. Microsoft at the same time worked on a, on a new initiative to secure the IoT and OT devices in parallel, and in order to provide full and comparative security OT IoT solution, Microsoft acquired CyberX and merged both products to defend the for IoT platform to solve end to end the IoT and OT security challenge. So let's discuss now a bit about the challenges and start with what is OT. So OT, uh, operational technology, also called uh, industrial a control system, ICS, also called uh, SCADA systems, are systems that used in industrial environments to control and monitor physical devices that are part of the critical production infrastructure. It can be pumps, turbines, robotics assembly lines, and so on. The goal of OT security is to prevent attacks on industrial systems and industrial networks that can include people, assets, information, and so on by monitor, detect, and control changes in, in the physical devices and the, and the processes. So it's, it's important to remember that when those systems, the OT systems are being damaged, it's people, property, and production availability that can be affected. This kind of damage can be huge for an organization, even in a few minutes of production downtime that can lead to huge loss, loss, loss of money. So we, which organiza organizations usually need the OT security? So it's, it's, very, it's very wide. Organization in the manufacturing, in food and beverage, in, in oil and gas, in mining, in chemical, in petrochemical, and other industries are focusing in uh, OT cyber security to safeguard their assets, their OT assets, their systems, their processes from cyber attack, and also to comply with uh, regulatory requirements, strict regulatory requirements. So IoT and OT devices are everywhere. Everywhere You can find the usual OT devices with the production facility, uh, such as engineer workstation, HMIs, PLCs that are being used to control and manage the production infrastructure. And also there are many other types of unmanaged devices in the OT networks, such as network devices, printers, sensors, alarms, and also IT within the OT network that are usually supporting the OT process. That can be, for example, a camera in the OT environment that help to control the production process. In addition to that, IoT devices are very common in the rest of the organization. It can be air conditioned, it can be smart TVs, it can be cameras, VoIP phone, lift, lifts, network devices, and actually many more in today's modern buildings. And those smart devices are all around us. They are part of our envir environment. And most importantly, they are increasing the attack surface and we must protect all of them end to end to provide proper security for the organization. 
And the goal of Defender for IoT is to protect uh, every IoT and OT device that you have in, in the organization. Now, in recent years, we are seeing a trend of growth in the following the digital transformation and the great benefit to see of it. We are seeing a, a, a great trend of IoT and OT devices, uh, such as smart devices, automated devices, and actually uh, unmanaged systems uh, that increasing dramatically within most of the organization. And in fact, uh, the expectation is that there are going to be more IoT and OT devices in the organization than IT devices. And from security perspective, that means that the bigger chunk of the organization is now starting and became IoT and OT devices rather than the classic IT. And with the growth of those devices, also the risk is growing. The attack surface is growing, the vulnerabilities is growing, the number of attacks following that is, is also growing. And that's, uh, that's why we're here. Another trend that we are seeing happening and increasing in recent years is if in the past we saw that the OT network and the IT networks were separated, today with the digital, digital information and the industry 4.0 in the last years, uh, and the need to bring more usability to the network, we are seeing that the boundaries are now shifting. We are seeing more OT devices in the IT network and IT devices in the OT network. They are communicating one with another and they are no longer go, uh, completely segregated environments. For example, in production facility with, with the traditional OT environment, we are seeing now IoT devices again, such cameras, printers, etc., that can monitor and uh, monitor the production lines, and also sensors such as temperature sensor and and others that are, that can collect operational data and send it, for example, over a wireless network to the back of the system and, and to the IT to to increase the visibility. So from one side, IT technology within the OT environment enables the organization to make better use of data that generated by uh, OT through IoT devices, but IT and OT converge also pose some challenges in, in security. So we have discussed how big and risky the attack surface is it, but, but you might ask yourself, why does anybody will attack my IoT and OT devices? So, Attacks, attackers actually uh, might use the, the controllers, the PLCs, the HMIs, the engineer workstation, and all the assets in the OT environment as a way sometimes to enter to a private network and go from there. And sometimes the OT and the IoT devices can be the target of the attack itself. Some examples of attacks from the of attacks that happened in the IT OT uh, landscape in the recent year are, for example, uh, Triton, which is an attack in, on Saudi, Saudi Arabian petrochemical plant, which attackers took control on controllers in order to shut down the safety systems and potentially use other software to make the equipment and the pl planet uh, malfunction. Um, another type of, of attack is uh, Vercada, which attackers breach the organization infrastructure and move across networks to gain control on cameras. And on that case, the data on the IoT device was the target itself, and it was leaked to the internet. And another example that, that you can see here is uh, the NASA, NASA uh, uh, attack. And NASA was act uh, using unauthorized Raspberry Pi, which is a small electronic device that was connected to the network, and it was used as an entry point to the ASAN, NASA network uh, for, for the attackers that actually stole the data that uh, related to the Mars mission. So those are just a few examples uh, to illustrate that those attacks are real. They are going to happen more and more, uh, and we are seeing that already today. And most importantly, the implications of such attacks can be huge, and actually they are going to affect and affecting the physical world. They can, they can cause physical damage. They can cause lack of availability. They can damage the production. They could call uh, malfunction and down, downtime and so on. Uh, and the implications can be can be huge. And to summarize the challenges, uh, we are as, as, as said, those those attacks are here. They are growing, and the IoT and OT devices are uh, growing our attack surface, and eventually. They are leading to some amazing numbers that you can see here and focusing on the 31% data point. We are seeing today that 31% of the companies actually limit their 
exposure to adopt IoT and OT technologies and IoT and OT projects and basically stop or limiting their digital transformation process because they are lack in IoT and OT security uh, in their organization. In other words, because of lack in security, we're seeing that uh, around 31% of the company's business are limited or not progressed as planned, and this is, this is huge. And our goal in Defender for IoT is to enable the organization to progress, to enable their digital transformation process and help them to be secure enough to do so. So now let's discuss uh, let's discuss a bit about Defender for IoT. So uh, so a bit overview about what what are the related main points that organizations are facing today, uh, and how we are addressing those pain points for the customer as part of a Defender for IoT platform. So. First step of security is discovery, understanding the attack surface, uh, understanding what devices do you have in the network, how they are communicating between each other, or uh, wh what communication you have between networks or, in the or for the external networks. And that's because you can't protect what you don't know. And Defender for IoT uh, is not just showing a list of IoT and OT devices in the, in the network, in the organization, like the inventory, but also a visualized map to help the security analysts, the OT engineers and the security teams to understand how the network is looks like, how the devices are communicating with each other, uh, which networks are communicating and which subnets are communi communicating between each and, an, and another, uh, how they are communicating and, and so on. Uh, the, the, the second one is risk and vulnerability management. So, Risk manager CISO in organization would like to discover his potential risk in the network, would like to prioritize those risks, those risks. Would like, and at the end, we'd like also to improve his security posture, his security score, and, uh, and mitigate those risks in order to protect the network and also, of course, the, his, uh, his crown jewels and important assets. So in Defender for IT, a risk manager can see, first of all, the high severity CVEs, for his assets for the IoT and OT devices in the network, the vulnerabilities and the potential uh, threats. Uh, but more than that, he can understand how attacker can propagate to the network. Uh, and for example, use lateral movement to, to, to move from IT to OT and, and, and eventually get to the, to the crown jewel. This is, uh, this is by using the, the attack vector that help the uh, risk manager and the CISOs, CISOs to, uh, to simulate kind of attacks that can be uh, in their network and eventually help them prioritize those risks, those risks and those, uh, uh, those potential attacks based also on the expected business impact. And after understanding the risk, a defender for IoT also providing recommendation on how and which mitigation step we should, we should take in order to stop those risks or reduce the risk in various points uh, of the attack. Next is a uh, threat detection and incident response. So after understanding potential risk, now the security analyst and the security team would like to understand uh, when risk has been realized and we have an actually incident, what, what, what actually happens in the network and how that can be solved. So Defender for IT continuously monitoring the network and alerting the SOC and the OT team about threats in the network that can be, for example, malicious malware, that can be anomalies from the, from, from the baseline, that can be a policy violation and so on. And, and providing also mitigation step together with, and, and together with Sentinel also uh, allowing to leverage the playbooks uh, that can be either out of the box or customized to, to automate the, the incident response for those kinds of, uh, of threats that already exist in the, net, in the network. And some of the incidents can be security incidents, but some of them can be also operational incidents. Uh, human error is, is also very common. It can affect uh, the, 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 the and the, the planet and the and and the, and the, the, the OT environment. So OT and IoT networks are very sensitive and Defender for IoT alerting 
on operation in the network that can be done by human error or by misconfiguration that can do some sort of uncoordinated changes for the, for example, for the PLCs that was not planned and could potentially cause to damage shutdown of the production line, for example, or, or something else. A example of that can be a PLC, which sometimes can be part of a cyber attack, but sometimes can be operational alert that was uncoordinated or some external vendor that coming to the OT network and doing some sort of work on a PLC without you knowing about it. And the last one is actually our focus for this, cent for this webinar is how do we connect the IT, OT and IoT to the SOC? And how do we provide cross network monitoring with visibility to threats that can start from IT and continue to the OT? So together with Sentinel, we are helping to bridge the gap between the security teams, the OT teams, the IT teams, and introduce the full OT context to the Sentinel, eventually in a way that, that will help to converge the IT and OT to one, uh, under one, one roof. Um, and we will discuss uh, in more details later how we are doing that and our strategy uh, and, and the feature uh, around that uh, in more details. So a bit about how Defender for IoT works uh, and the architecture of Defender for IoT. So at the basic, we have an OT and I an IoT network that we would like to monitor and protect. Um, and for to monitor the, the network traffic and detect track threats and risks in the network, Defender for IoT use a passive network sensor to using a port mirroring, usually using a span port or tap. Uh, that, that is connected to the switch and by that collecting and understanding all the data that is being transferred, all the traffic that is being transferred in, in, the, in the OT environment and analyzing that by using DPI. In, in addition to the passive network sensor, Defender for IT also collects uh, data to, to increase the coverage using additional data sources that can be, for example, uh, MDE, Microsoft uh, Defender for Endpoints, agents that uh, in case of IoT devices collecting data uh, that can be uh, that, that can increase this, uh, the, the data on the on the OT environment can be also third party sources uh, that sending data and uh, and and increasing the coverage and after collecting the data again that can be from a passive and network sensor and, and from external and internal data sources uh, Defender for IoT analyzing the, the, the network packets uh, uh, by using the deep packet inspection uh, and machine learning. And, and at the end, uh, uh, using that to determine which, what devices we have in the network, how they are communicating with, the, with another, uh, is their behavior okay or not, using threat intelligence, using uh, uh, Section 52 that provides threat intelligence for OT and IT, um, and whether they are th those devices are vulnerable or not, and, and so on, and the end provides a, a full a full picture around uh, a, a, around that. At, and, and at the end of, of the process, Defender for IT generating the, the device inventory and the device map that we discussed, and the risk management recommendation, the trade detection, and streaming that to the SIM source system. Uh, in that case, Sentinel to provide to stock the full IT and OT picture. Moving to, uh, to the OT enabled SOC. Um, so let's start with some brief overview about Sentinel. Uh, Tiander, do, would you like to present? Yeah, thank you, Amit. Um, so hello, everyone. Uh, if you've been joining this channel uh, uh, previously, you probably are familiar with Sentinel, what it is about. But uh, for the folks who are not that familiar with, with Sentinel, uh, one, I would recommend uh, to watch all the recordings. We have older recordings that we dive in, in different sections. But let me use this slide to just uh, recap what Microsoft Sentinel is all about. Well, first and foremost, it's a cloud-born SIM. 
uh, which does not mean that we're limited to Azure. Uh, you can see that by our partnership with the Defender for IoT and other security services like Defender for Cloud, Defender for Endpoint, all those security services that you are potentially using uh, today. So because of the uh, advantages of the cloud, you don't have to worry about how to scale your environment, right? How to install it, how to kind of make sure that, that the system is performant. We take care of that by leveraging uh, the cloud capability, the cloud agility, and how can we scale, right? And that kind of technology that we have using, been using for years allows us to kind of leverage the machine learning capability, the artificial intelligence, all that greatness in, in Azure, uh, takes kind of the benefit, uh, leverages the benefit that you get using Sentinel, which means that whenever there's a new uh, threat being um, discovered or maybe built upon, um, with the help of the security research that are feeding their knowledge into Sentinel, you take benefit of that automatically. So we will continue to update the product to give you insights in new rising campaigns and be become more proactive, which uh, leads me to how you would triage and expedite incidents, which I'm going to show you uh, uh, shortly after a couple of slides that we have to do a demo on how that works together with Defender for IoT. But we invested a lot in how you would kind of triage and determine that you are looking at a false positive, a true positive, or whether you should be worried and kind of investigate further before it might uh, kind of have a result in a breach or any other um, things that are ugly today. And with those new technologies, it's a cloud sim, right? It's not your your daddy's uh, sim that uh, has been deployed like uh, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. We are right on par with what the attackers are doing. Uh, and that will give you the advantage to get ahead of, of the hackers with all the new technology uh, that we have. That, my friends, is in short, uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Sentinel, the cloud-born uh, SIM. Amit, do you want to take the next slide? Yes, thank you, Deandre. Sure. So before diving into the capabilities and the features of uh, the OT enabled SOC within Sentinel, uh, let's start with uh, some overview about the market challenge and what is the problem that we are trying to address and the, the market trend of uh, addressing IT and OT converge. So first, in most of organization today, when it comes to uh, enterprise SOC, there is a lack of OT expertise and OT knowledge to properly handle the OT security incidents, and that happens in, in a few levels. At the people level, uh, we are seeing that there is a lack of skill set among the SOC analysts to handle the OT security incidents, because OT, SOC analysts tend to come from the IT space. At the process level, in many organizations, there is, there is a lack of communication between the OT engineers and the, the IT team, the SOC team. And uh, the IT people do not also fully understand what can be the, the impact of OT incidents that report on, on physical equ equipment, on OT environment, on OT devices. And, and on the technical level, uh, the, the SIMs today do not have native OT capabilities and context, context to, to, to include visibility and uh, functionality related to, to the OT, uh, OT environment. So the OT context is a lot of times in seems absent and users have to spend hours of SOC operations to build kind of content package to support their OT within uh, their existing seams. And uh, in, in other words, there is no really a, a real single pane of glass for OT and uh, IoT with, with the IT environment. And most important is not only visibility, but also uh, the ability to correlate between the IT events the, and, and, the, and the OT events, like from the IT environment and the OT environment, which this is actually what normally leads to most, leads to most of the attacks on, on the OT, OT network. Most of the attacks uh, are involving both networks, the IT network and the, and the OT network. That was a, a brief overview about the challenges the, and the problems that we see in the market regarding converging the IT and OT. 
Um, and so what we are trying to do together with Sentinel, and again, this is a joint effort of, of both groups of Defender for OT and, and, and the Sentinel team, is to, is to build a, a value proposition in Sentinel that will introduce the OT context in Sentinel in such way that will help to converge the IT and OT to one uh, under one roof in a single pane of glass, uh, uh, which is Sentinel, and eventually reduce the time that it takes to manage and resolve the OT uh, incident efficiently. And we are doing that in, in a few levels. In the visibility level, uh, we would like to provide to SOC visibility to all the assets, including IT and OT, and with the risk, uh, with the vulnerabilities, and with the related incidents. Uh, in the threat and monitor, in the monitor, uh, consolidating monitor, uh, we would like to provide a single pane of glass to monitor the entire IT and OT incidents uh, within both environments and also to correlate between the IT and OT security events without the need to context switch between different systems uh, or learn a few different systems or manage different SOC teams for each environment, etc. And uh, the third level of the incident response, so by, by leveraging Sentinel playbooks uh, in Sentinel, SOC can automate their full IT and OT incident, uh, incident response process. And finally, in terms of security automation, enabling SOC analysts to automate and customize, customize their uh, security incidents uh, uh, generate process and reduce the alert fatigue to the processes and the workflow workflows they would like to to focus on. So as mentioned, uh, we, our goal with Sentinel of so Defender for OT and Sentinel with the consolidate IT and OT uh, threat monitoring is uh, main, the, the two main goals are to uh, converge the IT and OT SOC and uh, reduce the time it takes to solve incident. And we are doing that not by sending and streaming alerts from Defender for OT to Sentinel, but by bringing the full OT context with built-in features within Sentinel for the same screens, screens that SOX already work with, uh, in Sentinel to uh, streamline the workflow, streamline their investigation process, their prioritization process, so that at the end, SOC will understand what to do with the OT data, what the expected business impact following OT incidents, how they can respond to those incidents um, in, in, a, in an easy way and, uh, and efficiently. So, uh, OT data is being integrated to Sentinel in two, in, in two ways. The first one, is built in native feature in Sentinel for OT that provide deep contextual telemetry from Defender for IoT system. That include obviously the OT alert that being streamed to Sentinel, but that being enhanced with the OT assets that's related to the incidents with the data about the OT assets like their vulnerability, their uh, risk score, their, their uh, behavior anomalies, etc. Their business impact, uh, the, the incidents business business impact that ha can help SOC to prioritize those incidents by understanding the, the, geo the geolocation and uh, which exactly uh, site zone like production line or plant was affected and by which sensor uh, this device was detected and that can help SOC to prioritize those incidents. Uh, identifying the asset owner so that OT engineer can, uh, so, so that SOC can identify who is the OT engineer the, from the field that we that he can contact to for additional investigation or questions on that specific device. Uh, Crown jewels identify the important device to help SOC uh, prioritize the incidents by the, the importance of the device. And, uh, and also uh, uh, streamline the, the investigation experience by first easily navigate between Sentinel incident to Defender for IT incidents if, if needed for, uh, for more deep investigation and pickup success, etc. cetera. And, uh, and also leverage the Defender for IT network connection that, that allows SOC to understand how the IT and OT assets are communicating 
um, and between themselves, uh, between uh, OT to OT, IT to OT, uh, uh, access pickups easily, and, and, and etc. The other type of data that is being integrated to Sentinel uh, is data in a type of content package uh, that can be uh, can be accessed by Sentinel Content Hub uh, with a dedicated solution package that provide out of the box content with uh, zero effort deployment. This this data can include uh, the Mitra tech for ICS, so for every incident for Defender for IT, so can see the specific ICS te tactic and technique that mapped to this specific uh, incident or attack uh, and understand what is the attack stage that, uh, and, and, and what, uh, 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 what is the security posture by understanding and reviewing the, the Mitra metrics. And some out of the box workbooks and dashboards that uh, drive some uh, insights on alerts, on incidents, on protocols and on the network in general. Uh, some out of the box uh, playbooks that uh, specifically for OT and IoT uh, to help SOC to respond to OT threats uh, easily. Uh, some fused IT and OT incidents to get the full picture and combine logs from different data sources uh, to, 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 to have a picture about also multi stages attack that starting from IT and continue to OT. Uh, and also uh, uh, sync status changes between Sentinel to Defender for IT to stream the, the workflow of, uh, of, of, SOC, uh, of SOC analyst. So the, the content package that we just discussed uh, usually required a lot of efforts from SOC engineer uh, in order to build it and the complexity of building such, such package uh, can, be, can be huge. By providing this out of the box, uh, that we are that we are investing a lot in in in, in this uh, solution package and providing out of the box, and we will continue to invest and improve in such content that uh, eventually will help to to reduce the time it takes to solve uh, incidents and converge the IT and OT, uh, and, uh, and 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 uh, to to summarize the solution package. Uh, the, the solution package uh, includes three types of data, the workbooks, the analytic rules and, and playbooks, workbooks to, to dashboard and general insights, analytic rules to reduce the alert fatigue and allow SOC teams to focus on the most important alerts and playbooks for the, for the incidents response. So to summarize, how, how do we envision the user experience and the investigation flow between Sentinel and Defender for IoT? So we are seeing the Sentinel as, of course, the, the IT and OT SIM and SOAR platform, uh, while Defender for IoT uh, is the OT uh, expert systems. And our vision is that uh, most of the data uh, that required for the investigation process will be available in, in Sentinel with the full OT context that will allow SOC analysts to handle the OT incidents uh, in, in without context switching in stream uh, and, and in, in in easy way with streamlined streamed uh, workflow uh, and other operations that might require a very deep dive dive uh, investigation will be done in Defender for IoT. So let's let's take uh, like let, let's take this investigation flow and and try to illustrate it on a, a real. A use case that can be on OT environment. Uh, I'll start with uh, describe the, the the use case, and then uh, with the under we will demo how that can be uh, investigated in uh, Sentinel. So let's take for example a, a, a case where a vendor arrives to a plan to perform some regular uh, maintenance task. Uh, the vendor connect its uh, laptop to the to the OT network. And eventually, this, this laptop connected, first of all, was de detected in Defender for IoT as a new asset that was not coordinated and allowed to be connected to the OT environment, and, uh, and also was uh, co connected to the internet in an unauthorized manner. At the end, the, the, this, uh, this connectivity to the internet caused to download of malicious uh, uh, file, and, uh, uh, and at the end, to cause to some a, a malicious activity around the PLCs on the plants. Uh, the first step 
that caused following the, this malicious file that was uh, downloaded is a scan detected on, on PLCs to find the PLCs on the network. And at the end, uh, uh, this malicious file is caused to a stop command on a PLC, on an important PLC on the on the on the plant that eventually calls to a production downtime. Let's take this as the use case for the demo that uh, that we will present now. Uh, the other. Yes, uh, thank you, Amit. I'm going to um, take over the screen. And uh, Amit, if you can uh, confirm that you can see my uh, yeah, my yeah, I screen, that would be great. OK, um, so if you have not seen uh, Sentinel uh, before, uh, this is the landing page uh, of Microsoft Sentinel, and I'm going to talk about uh, a couple of things. But first and, and foremost, uh, I wanted to kind of uh, uh, show you how to onboard uh, the data connectors. Well, the data connector specifically for Defender for IoT, and where you can find additional content. So we uh, we point this as content management, and we point this as configuration because you want to configure Sentinel to interact with Defender for IoT. So under the data connector section, uh, you can see a bunch of connectors. Uh, not only Microsoft connectors, right? But you can see kind of here multiple vendors here. Uh, so we are a kind of multi-vendor SIM, not only for Microsoft technology, but also uh, for different vendors, networking, uh, all kinds of uh, AWS, uh, all, all kinds of different connectors. Now in this context, we're going to look at the IoT uh, connector. Um, and you might be asking why is Sentinel better together uh, with Defender for IoT? Well, this is the question to your answer, or maybe you're wondering, because with one single click, I can just connect or disconnect and I'm good to go. That's all I, I need, need to do. So whenever I decide to connect it, uh, I click on connect uh, this button here and I'm connected. So you can see the status and uh, we will show you uh, on the left here, that we have data flowing in and you can look at the templates that we have, the workbooks that we have, and we guide you with the next steps and give, we give you some query examples. So you can see here that we provide you with an analytics template, which in our world is a rule, a detection rule, which would uh, interact with information that is coming in. So as soon as you have enabled this connector, Data will be flowing in, so you can see the chart here. How many, how much data uh, is flowing in into my workspace? Now, when you've uh, done that, um, I would recommend also to go to the uh, content hub, which I just pointed out, right? And the content hub is actually where we kind of uh, have discovery capabilities for you to look at different solutions. So we have more than 180 solutions right here. Um, and you can kind of pick and choose. And if I want to look at IoT, obviously, I can click on this tile, which gives me uh, the solution here. And on the right, you can see that I have what we call the content type, which are analytics rules. So you can see that we have like uh, 15 uh, rules for you out of the box. We got four playbooks and we got one workbook. So this is how you detect events, how you would create an incident in Sentinel. And this is how we would kind of work with you on our SOAR capability. So automation, which is referenced in our world as playbooks. And then the dashboard capability, that would be our workbooks. Now to give you kind of an example of, hey, I've installed this right now, and you can see here that I'm able to reinstall it or delete it when we have an update, because this will all also cover updates. Whenever there's an update going on, uh, you can kind of go back here and install that update. If you are looking for different uh, kind of content types, like maybe hunting queries, you can filter for that as well. And this is where you kind of, uh, uh, look for new content. It's kind of kind of a marketplace that you can uh, that you can use. Now, when you've installed those, you typically want to create incidents. This is where we uh, go to analytics, 
which will have all the templates uh, available for you. And what I can do, I can search for specific rules that are based on, on IoT. So you can see here that I've got a specific IoT alerts that I've installed in, in um, uh, enabled in, in my environment. So these will, these will all kind of capture whenever there's an, uh, uh, an event, a notable event or an alert that we need to interact with. Uh, so this is how you kind of uh, enable, disable them. Uh, so I can highlight this one and I can say disable or enable them. And all of this is uh, kind of automation capable. So you can do this through automation, through ARM templates, if you're familiar with that, PowerShell or CLI, this is fully configurable. Now, when you've done this, uh, you will get a playbook, so automation kind of uh, uh, capabilities, but you can also look for what I call the workbooks capability, which is right here. So you can look for visualization of data. And one of the workbooks I'm going to show you is the IoT uh, workbook that I have here. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see. Um, so I can do all kinds of filtering here. I can select my subscription. I'm, I can uh, select my, my time range. And here I can see all kinds of alerts. I see some trending information. I can see kind of uh, uh, alerts that are popping up. I can see vendor information, whether I have alerts uh, going on, whether I have a, a compromised en entity that I need to look at. Um, and and my uh, my alerts filtered right here. But also when I move up a bit, uh, you can see that we also have the MITRE attack framework alignment. So you can see here how you are covered uh, based on on uh, on the MITRE attack alignment, uh, the MITRE framework with tactics and techniques. You can see all of these here. And also if you want to look at device inventory, uh, this is the inventory page that will show you uh, the inventory uh, um, that we have collected from uh, Defender for IoT. Now this is how you would set up um, now if you have set up uh, all the things here, then you're ready to kind of manage this as you would be in a normal, uh, that's a weird uh, thing to say, in a SOC, which we would cover uh, IT, right? But now this is the strength of the partnership that we have with um, Defender for IET that you will get IT information, networking information, all kinds of information combined with, um, with the Defender for IET information. So if you remember um, the demo use case that we, uh, that we just uh, discussed, uh, let me show you that slide to refresh, uh, and this is for myself as well. We're gonna look at a vendor arrived into the plant and connected his device with uh, the uh, network over there. So let's see what uh, what happens when I when I do that. Uh, so let's take a look at incidents. So incidents is actually my queue for me to work at. And what I've done now, I filtered. Uh, let me um, zoom out a little bit so I can see and show you a little bit more. Um, so I've assigned all the incidents, uh, which, uh, sorry, I filtered on all the incidents that are assigned to me. So I only see the incidents because I might be a, a tier two analyst or something like that. And what we are going to look at is, um, is the first uh, kind of incident that I want to kind of uh, explore, right? So we can see a new asset detected. You can see Defender for IoT kind of uh, appearing here. And this is kind of telling me, hey, uh, a new source has been detected on the network, but has not been authorized. So is that something that I should be uh, kind of uh, um, concerned about? Um, maybe I can look at the full details uh, here. Um, and what I, I'm about to show you um, is something that Sentinel can do automatically, but that would not be any fun to demo. So what I want to do is here, I can look at the entities, I can see an IP address, but does, that doesn't really tell me something. So I'm going to run a playbook, our SOAR capability, that I want to kind of get more information. I want to correlate uh, the IP address, right? Um, and notice that uh, uh, I don't have any comments in here. Uh, I don't have any tags. This is what the uh, what generally the uh, SOC analyst is uh, is using. And now you've seen in real time popping up that we found a correlation, right? 
Uh, so uh, this could be run automatically. So I can I can have this automatically executed so the SOC analyst doesn't have to spend time on this, but we have a warning. We found correlations and we found an unauthorized suspicious outbound connection. And you can see here which entities. So this is the uh, kind of combining uh, combining um, OT with IT. So the vendor for IT uh, combining it. Because I can see now that it, it is related to uh, a server I have in my IT environment with a specific IP address. And um, uh, this is something I need to investigate, right? So I can say, uh, needs investigation and uh, when I can type correctly, I'm adding a comment and when I go back, you can see now that we are adding text. So when I've done this automatically, um, the SOC analyst will, will now going forward see this immediately. So for the sake of the demo, I've executed this, executed this, this manually. Now interesting is that uh, Sentinel has found the unauthorized internet con connectivity detected and so did um, Defender for IoT. So we saw uh, this uh, raised uh, by Defender for IoT, uh, the unauthorized connectivity detected, but uh, Sentinel uh, uh, saw that uh, saw that as well. So when we look at the um, um, the unauthorized suspicious connection, and I click on it, you can see here on the bottom you see entities, which are uh, a couple of entities that uh, catch my my eye. One of this is that remember that the vendor used this IP address. So when I look look back at the at the slides, you can see that this was the uh, the vendor um, IP connecting. So this is the IP address that the, that vendor was used. So we're going to track him, right? So because we saw that he has kind of connected with an IT asset. And he's also kind of uh, connected with a public IP, which is uh, not the greatest thing. So what I want to do, and again, I can run this automatically. Um, I want to kind of uh, uh, correlate this and let's see what happens if I correlate this. Uh, so uh, let's uh, let's see if I can uh, find some correlations. So these, all of these, and I will show you that in a minute, can be invoked automatically. So what I can do here um, is uh, create a uh, automation rule, which by default would run that for me. Now I'm interested in, in kind of what happened with this, uh, so I can visualize it. I can go ahead and explore that uh, further down, down the line. Uh, but what's, what is also interesting is that if I look at the comments here, which didn't exist before, uh, I can see that now we've found an, an threat intelligence match. And um, when I allow the out of refresh to kick in, uh, I will also get a tag that I found a threat intelligence match. So when I look at the full details here, um, I can see my entities right over here, but I can also look at that specific uh, IP address. So you can see kind of what the geolocation is. So where did it did it get connected? Uh, and all of that greatness, and I can see the alerts and activities also here that it uh, shows me the combined information with the Fender for IET uh, and also with the Sentinel event. So this is the, the power of combining, uh, combining those two. So let me go back and let, let me focus on, uh, on two Defender for IET incidents. Uh, the first is the S7 stop uh, command was sent. Now this could be, and this is the reason that it is flagged as, uh, as a low priority. You can see that here, the, the, the severities. Um, and you can see it because it might be expected, right? So it might be something that, that we expect uh, to happen. So what we can do, uh, we can look at the full details if, if, if we wanted to, um, but I don't know whether this is a low severity or uh, so meaning a false positive or a true positive. So what I can do uh, based on the uh, information that I have 
um, I can uh, reach out to the owner, right? I, I can ask him. So why don't we do that automatically before the SOC analyst is going to look at this? So what I will do now, and again, let me emphasize that I can do this automatically. I'm going to send an email to the IT owner. So I'm going to click on run, on run. This will be automatically executed. And what this exactly uh, does is it will help the SOC analyst uh, to triage whether this is something that is expected. So notice the uh, a couple of things here. Again, low severity, and I don't have any comments. Now, the owner of the, the device uh, will be uh, getting an email, and let me show you the email. So uh, focus on the timestamp. It's it's my my local time, so it's exactly in the same minute. And what this is exactly is saying is, hey. Uh, we have identified you as the device owner. You, we can see the incident title here, the device name, uh, the sensor name, and we are asking uh, the owner, hey, is this expected or not? Is this a false positive or not? Uh, and me as the owner, no, I don't want to see a PLC stop S7 event. So no, this is not expected. So I'm clicking on it. The response is going to be sent back to the uh, to Sentinel. And what this will do, if you notice the low severity here and the comments, it will quickly uh, uh, change based on uh, based on the uh, on the response. And and polite that we are in Sentinel. I'm getting an email. Thank you for confirming this is a true positive incident. Uh, so we will uh, flag this as true positive and we'll investigate further. And we will give you the link to the incident so you can kind of look at the incident. Now you can see that this changed into high. So uh, and we changed the tag. So now this is a true positive confirmed by the user and we are also recording that uh, response. So the response was, hey, um, the user has auto confirmed that this is a true positive. This was the email address and no, this was not expected. So we're raising the severity to high and we're out of assigning the incident to the right tier. So you don't waste time on triaging and figuring out who should be kind of the uh, uh, the analyst uh, working uh, working on on this. So the last demo I, I wanted to show you to show you the, the strength of um, of the integration is that we have also the um, um, the PLC programming uh, section here because I wanted to showcase uh, what we what we can 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 show you uh, for the uh, information. So if I look at the full details here, and again we uh, we already uh, looked at the entities here, uh, which was uh, our entity. What I want to show you is um, the information that you can pivot to Microsoft Defender for IoT. So if I've investigated this and I want to see more information, I can click actually uh, on this page. I'm going to open it in new tab um, so you can see a detailed information of that device uh, if I need more information. So you can see uh, it's authorized, we have alert, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and all kinds of attributes uh, that we uh, that we want to so, show, but the, a, a pre pre kind of a, uh, preview of this is also coming into the incidents that that I just uh, show you. So let me revisit one more time the incident page and uh, show you the device here because I wanted to show you what we bring uh, into uh, into Sentinel, and you can see here that we have a subset of that information uh, in the uh, in the page here. So you can see who's the owner, uh, owner right here, where the, what the model is, what authorization do I have, et cetera. So that was a really short and quick uh, demo on, uh, on triaging within Sentinel. So I'm gonna give it back to you, Amit, thanks. Thanks, Deander. So just to summarize, so, uh, so we we covered we covered the investigation flow uh, that can be done using using both systems Sentinel and Defender for IoT. Uh, we the, the we saw that uh, the incident creation can be done using the connect connecting Defender for IoT and solution package and create some analytic rules. We can identify the business impact mapping using the the screen that uh, uh, Tiander just showed the entity page, which showing the the geolocation, the size, the zone, the sensors and the importance of this device, if this is a crown jewel or not, who is the OT owner, 
we can uh, a SOC analyst can uh, uh, streamline his investigation flow by leverage uh, uh, the threat intelligence in 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 Sentinel uh, view the network connection and use use the, the workbooks uh, and use more data from the from the OT device entity page and also access easily to defender for IoT uh, uh, screen to, to 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 reach out for for more data like uh, pickups and more and more deep data about the device itself uh, and respond efficiently using playbooks with uh, a lot of examples that you just saw uh, using uh, in the Tiander's uh, demo and also can in Defender for IT easily do some more policy changes like suppress or learn uh, uh, an alert uh, uh, for, for, for the next cases. And eventually, uh, any change on the statuses of, of an incident that SOC is doing in Sentinel uh, will be reflected in Defender for IT, again, to reduce the, 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 the context switching and uh, make the workflow for the SOC analyst uh, much more efficient. That's all. Thank you uh, all. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions and uh, to our documentations to, 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 to read more about the Better Together solution. Uh, and have a great day. Great, thank you. Uh, we do have a few questions that I'd like to reiterate. Um, the first one is, uh, to what level of the Purdue model can Defender for IoT see? So actually, Defender for IoT can see all, all levels of the, uh, of the Purdue layer. Great, thank you. Uh, the next one is, how does Defender for IoT identify IoT devices without an agent? So the Defender for IoT has a, a passive a network monitor, which analyzing the, uh, the packets and uh, using a port mirroring. And, uh, and by that, uh, uh, reviewing all the packets, uh, the payloads, the header, the foot, and, and, and all the packets data, and understand, and by analyzing that, uh, understanding what kind of devices in the network, threats, and uh, risks. Great, thank you. Uh, the next one we have is, what is the difference between IoT sensors and EIoT sensors? So, uh, OT sensor is, is a sensor that is being uh, located in the OT environment and uh, passively monitors to the network. The, the IoT is a sensor that uh, also using a machine learning, uh, analyzing only part of the packets and not, and not uh, the, 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 and all, all of the packets and uh, like learning what kind of, uh, by, by reducing the full packet analysis, uh, understanding what kind of devices ca it, it can be in order to reduce the, uh, the, the, the traffic and uh, the, the traffic that is being analyzed. And also using Defender for IoT, uh, we can enrich the, 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 the data in, uh, that we are collecting on IoT devices by leveraging uh, the MDE agents. Great, um, that's all the questions we had today. So I'd like to thank uh, Tiander and Amit for being our guests today and for an excellent presentation. And thank you to the rest of the team who helped answer questions. At the same time, I would like to remind the listeners that the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements is to visit our landing page at aka.ms slash security community. And while there, you'll find easy ways to navigate and find the resources and learning content relevant to your to our security products and their communities. A good start would be browsing our bite-sized product videos, ninja trainings, recordings of past webinars, GitHub communities, and more. We'd love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars. Please take a minute submitting your webinar feedback at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. Thank you and see you next time. Goodbye.